We have to give Bezos that. This guy just won't give up. He really wants the HLS contract for his national team lander quite badly. So badly that he now offers $2 billion of his own money for NASA if they would be willing to choose his team as the second team for the Artemis human landing system. So what is behind this latest move and will Bezos have a chance of succeeding? Let's find out. So it seems that Jeff Bezos is really extremely motivated to keep his human lander for the Artemis program alive. Ever since NASA chose SpaceX as the sole contractor to build the human landing system for the Artemis program in the form of the Lunar Starship, Jeff Bezos has been extremely unhappy with NASA's decision. First he filed a protest with Blue Origin against that decision with the Government Accountability Office, where a decision is to be expected on August 4th. But the odds are not in favor of Blue Origin here. It is expected that the GAO will not grant the protests of Blue Origin and Dynetics, since this would effectively put the Artemis program on hold until NASA would then have to redo the whole competition. So then Jeff Bezos tried a second strategy in order to get his lander back into the game, the good old strategy of lobbying of course. Ah, good old lobbying. You know, this here is our favorite stock footage, we show it time and time again because it fits so perfectly to the world of space politics. So Blue Origin tried to lobby Maria Cantwell of Washington State to add 10 billion dollars to NASA's budget in a Senate bill. The bill passed the Senate, but it didn't pass the House, so that strategy didn't work out. And now Jeff is trying the third route namely contributing probably some of his own money. In an open letter from July 26th addressed directly to NASA Administrator Bill Nelson, Jeff Bezos himself says that he wants to offer $2 billion to NASA's HLS program in the next years if NASA decides to pick a second human landing system. Of course he means the national team's moon lander, that is absolutely clear, because he wouldn't want to spend two billion dollars on Dynetics team, that is quite self-explanatory. In this long letter he explains the benefits of the national team lander, for example that it offers a comprehensive approach to aborts and contingencies that places a priority on crew safety throughout all mission phases. Especially the 10 meter tall ladder looks extremely safe to us, just kidding, but yeah, we aren't really fans of the tall ladder design. Then he also stresses the reusability of the design and also that the lander uses liquid hydrogen and oxygen as fuel, resources that can easily be harvested on the moon. Indeed, we have to admit that this really is an advantage. You can easily harvest large amounts of hydrogen and oxygen directly from lunar ice deposits which are present down in the eternal darkness of the polar craters such as Shackleton. There, the sun rays never reach the deepest parts of the craters where large water ice deposits have formed over billions of years. These can be split into hydrogen and oxygen for fuel, but of course also be used for oxygen tanks for breathing in the moon bases of the future, but also as a water source for humans. He then goes on to say that NASA choosing only SpaceX was unfair and also going against NASA's original spirit of competition. Choosing only one contractor would leave NASA potentially at a higher risk of failure. Therefore, he says, NASA should reconsider and he lists three quite convincing arguments why NASA should do so. First. Blue Origin will bridge the HLS budgetary funding shortfall by waiving all payments in the current and next two government fiscal years up to $2 billion to get the program back on track right now. This offer is not a deferral but is an outright and permanent waiver of those payments. This offer provides time for government appropriation actions to catch up. Second, Blue Origin will, at its own cost, contribute the development and launch of a Pathfinder mission to low Earth orbit of the lunar descent element to further retire development and schedule risks. 
This Pathfinder mission is offered in addition to the baseline plan of performing a precursor uncrewed landing mission prior to risking any astronauts to the moon. This contribution to the program is above and beyond the over 1 billion of corporate contributions cited in our Option A proposal that funds items such as our privately developed BE-7 lunar lander engine and indefinite storage of liquid hydrogen in space. All of these contributions are in addition to the 2 billion waiver of payments referenced above. Finally, Blue Origin will accept a firm fixed price contract for this work, cover any system development cost overruns and shield NASA from partner cost escalation concerns. And he also stresses that the national team lander can be used in conjunction with not only SLS, but also with New Glenn, Vulcan Centaur and even Falcon Heavy. Yes, he really mentions Falcon Heavy, which we find quite surprising in its honesty. So now of course the big question is, will NASA accept this offer? Is this an offer they can't refuse? But before we try to answer that question, it's time for another Bohimso 3D printed model, which we want to showcase this month. Thematically, this one here fits the best of course, the famous Apollo Command and Service module, because we're talking about moon landings anyways. Of course, they also have the lunar starship, but the wonderful nostalgia of the good old Apollo days is just something which always fascinates us. Look at the wonderful detail here on that model, you even have a small door handle here, or the telecoms array here, or the steering nozzles. Awesome! You can order many more excellent 3D models from Bohimso's Etsy store site. They have many awesome models, even sci-fi ones, for example from Star Wars or Alien. Link to their site in the description. So then, what do you think? Will Jeff Bezos' epic plea for mercy be granted by the mighty powers at NASA? Well, first of all, we have to understand that the letter is in reality not really addressed to the mighty powers at NASA because NASA doesn't actually wield a lot of power, but to the mighty powers of Congress. In the letter, Bezos also writes that NASA's decision to select SpaceX only also eliminated the benefits of utilizing the broad and capable supply base of the national team as opposed to funding the vertically integrated SpaceX approach. This of course is painful for Congress people because they want to secure as many taxpayer paid jobs as possible for the spaceflight industry in as many states as possible. And since SpaceX is privately funded, that is of course something they don't like. So they actually do have an incentive to increase NASA's budget for the coming fiscal years. But of course, this will also depend on the ruling of the Government Accountability Office. Will they grant or dismiss Blue Origin's protest? We're not even really talking about Dynetics anymore here, because they were even more expensive than Blue Origin's bid with 9 billion dollars, compared to Blue Origin's 5.99 and compared to SpaceX's 2.9 billion. So with a 2 billion addition of Jeff Bezos, the cost of Blue Origin would come down to 3.99 billion dollars. Ok, still a billion more than SpaceX, but then at least a lot nearer to SpaceX's offer. It is highly unlikely that Dynetics would be able to bring down their costs from 9 billion to below 4 billion in order to be able to compete with Blue Origin. So a lot will depend on the GAO ruling on August 4th but we can already see this letter having an effect on Congress, at least to some extent. If the human landing system for Artemis won't be changed, then maybe at least Congress might fund some sort of lunar exploration transportation services in which Blue Origin would partake. Or other such solutions where the Blue Origin or National Team Lander would participate in some other form, without completely halting the Artemis program and completely redoing the HLS selection, which honestly would be bad, as it would delay the Artemis program unnecessarily. At least there is some positive news behind all this, because even though sometimes we made fun of Blue Origin for being really slow with their developments, for example with their new Glenn rocket, at least Jeff Bezos now really seems very eager and motivated to get more involved in Blue Origin and in human spaceflight. 
Not only did he fly to space himself recently, or to the edge of space, or however you want to define space, but no, he starts giving Blue Origin a lot of his attention, which we'd say is about time. If he now even starts pouring in some of his own funds, which he has plenty of as we know, this is a good thing long term for space competition. Sure, he won't be able to catch up to SpaceX anymore, let's be realistic. SpaceX is just in a whole different league already. But if he can contribute in something to the advancement of human spaceflight, we'd say that's a plus. We hope you enjoyed this episode. We actually managed to stay quite neutral on Blue Origin. What the hell is happening here? I'm surprised myself while writing the script that I'm managing to pull this off. So then, Jishwen and me wish you a nice day, all the best, and on to the future.